Good evening. We're going to start our meeting for September the 18th. We'll have the invocation uh, by the mayor and the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Furster. And then we'll have a roll call. Please stand. Our Heavenly Father, we gather to make decisions for our community. May we use only our best skills and judgment, keeping ourselves impartial and neutral as we consider the merits and pitfalls of each matter that is placed before us and always act in accordance with what is best for our community and our fellow citizens. And we, as we always say, let us think and pay respects to our first responders and our military. And thank for the people and bless and pray for the people up in the Carolinas and up north as they go through the flooding and uh, in the areas of uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. Amen. Commissioner Grogan? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Present. Mayor Johnson? Here. Commissioner Furster? Here. And Commissioner Oliver is absent. All right. Pro we have a proclamation tonight for West Orange Healthy Selfie Day, September the 21st tonight. Um, well, Lisa, when I get through, I'll have you come up. We'll take pictures. Are you the Lisa going to be doing that? Oh, all right. Let me read it, then we'll, all right? Healthy West Orange inspires healthy behaviors and provides resources to help residents make better lifestyle choices. And whereas Healthy West Orange champions healthy programs that deliver health and wellness activities. And whereas Healthy West Orange unites health-minded organizations for whom a healthy community provides meaningful benefits. And whereas West, Healthy West Orange advocates for healthy community decisions and encourages local leaders to keep their community's health and wellness as a top priority, and whereas Healthy West Orange declares the third Friday in September as annual West Orange Healthy Selfie Day. Now, therefore, the City Commission of the City of Okoy does hereby pro proclaim September the 21st, 2018 as annual West Orange Healthy Selfie Day. And in witness era of Mayor Rusty Johnson. I'm going to have all the commissioners come down front, and we're going to give this to the, uh, I think it's the hospital. You gotta have a selfie. I did one the other day at the mall. I did my virtual 5K. Oh, yeah. for the, and I wore the orange shirt. So. All right. All right, we have a, uh, another present presentation by Summit Construction regarding a proposed fire station located within the northwest area of the city. City plan room or city, uh, city manager, Chad. Thank you, Mayor. Um, members of the Commission, I'll just make a brief introduction. The city has been working with Summit Development um, on a commercial project up at the West Road Interchange, part of Fountains West, um, adjacent to the Fountains West Publix um, Plaza. 
and Summit Development is also moving their office to the city of Ocoee, um, located at the northeast corner of Bluford and Geneva Street. And so we spent a lot of time with them, and they are getting to know us a little better and happened to mention during one of our meetings that they've been uh, working on a P3 uh, project with another jurisdiction to possibly build them a fire station. And so we were like, how does this work? Because as you recall, almost a year ago, you all had set aside a small amount of money in the budget to look at possibly studying building a fire station, a new fire station in the northwest area. And then as things unfolded, we are taking on our EMS transport endeavor. So the folks from Summit are here to make a brief presentation on how a P3 or a public-private partnership program to construct a fire station could work and how it could benefit the city of Ocoee. And this is a briefing item. Um, this is something that if the commission desires to bring back and, and have more further discussion, then um, we would be happy to do that. And this is something that um, we are bringing to you at the authorization of the city manager. So if, if we could have our uh, representative to come up from Summit and introduce himself and the team, I'm gonna turn it over. Mr. McClifford. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for having us. I'm Chip Cordes with Summit Construction uh, Management Group here in, uh, in Orlando. The purpose of this P3, which is short for public-private partnership, and that's a way that the city can, can add new development to, uh, to the city um, and be able to finance it all at the same time. We're headquartered here in Orlando. We have our uh, design and construction offices are here and our sales and marketing is in the Jacksonville area. Our team has been together for quite some time. We've built in excess of 15 million square feet of commercial projects successfully in 17 countries. Uh, we have a reputation for cost efficiency in our designs and high quality of construction. We have a long-standing history of on-time completions. We've also built a number of uh, uh, time-sensitive projects that we've always been completed on time. Financially, we're very solid. We have the capacity of $40 million plus in uh, payment and performance bonds. That's, that's uh, not an issue for us. The P3 program utilizes prototype designs with options. So basically, instead of going out for a new design of a new fire station, we bring you prototype designs of, uh, we have six different fire stations. The one that we would recommend for you based on our research with your city staff is a three bay fire station, uh, a two story, so you can put it on less land. It's the savings is in reduced architectural and engineering costs. So everything has already been engineered. The architectural drawings are already done. It's, it saves the city money because we're not duplicating all those efforts and we're designing it in a best practices design. So we know how to be able to design it to where you can utilize it to its fullest without paying for stuff that you're never gonna use. It also incorporates all proven construction methods. The accelerated project delivery is one-stop shopping. We can, with this program, once you're approved for the lease of the building, uh, the lease is 20 years, at the end of 20 years, or whatever term you select, you then own the building. It's free and clear to you. Uh, there's no separate bids required for design and engineering. The project is typically completed within one year. The first lease payment is not due until after you're already in the building. If we complete the building in 10 months or less, then you, you wouldn't make your first payment until after you've been in the building for two to three months. Long-term municipal lease financing is what's provided here. And we also will offer in the lease all the optional furniture and specialized equipment. All of the project risk in this is transferred to us, the developer, or to any, whoever you choose to be your developer. It's a guaranteed maximum price. All scheduling, cost overruns, and construction delays are at the risk of the developer. The city has a fixed price on it, and so any of the risk is, is eliminated from the city's uh, portfolio. The city will um, select a third-party architect or engineer that you will approve and appoint for project review and oversight. So that way you are represented throughout the entire project. The area that we're looking at, if you look here, this is off of West Road on the north side of West Road, west of 429, and uh, it's behind the public shopping center. 
there's some property there across from where the charter school was installed and to the west of uh, the apartments, the new apartments. Uh, we have 11 acres there, and we suggest that two acres of that would be uh, used for the fire station. Now, this will give you a site plan. It's hard to see, but uh, right here is the fire station. This is a commercial building. This is going to be a daycare center. That's what's proposed to go there now. This is for the fire station, and this will be remaining property. The three bay fire station that we're recommending here would be a single story station of approximately 11,000 square feet. It includes all necessary dirty rooms separate from the living quarters. We determined through a lot of surveys with the fire department, the fire marshals, the fire chiefs that they want the decontamination rooms and the scrub down rooms all to be totally separate from the living area. So it's placed on the other side of the apparatus base and has access from the apparatus base and from the outside so that all that specialized equipment is away from the living areas of the firehouse. There's a in this particular one, it's suitable for 12 firemen, which would be 11 individual bunk rooms, sharing three full bathrooms, and then an individual bunk room for the, for the uh, reigning officer in charge, and he would have his own bathroom. Individual office spaces for the captain and lieutenant on duty, oversized training room to accommodate joint training with, with other fire stations, EMS or police, Report writing areas, a large TV lounge, even an exercise room. A large kitchen with multiple refrigerators and, and pantries for each of the uh, uh, um, uh, groups that will be there, the three different um, sections. An outdoor patio and a grill area. The procurement method allows the municipality to award a design and construction contract to one firm. No separate bid for design criteria package. It saves time, money, confusion, and hassle. And it transfers the project and the financial risk to the developer summit. Again, so the city has minimal risk in the development of this project. The requirements are the municipality must provide notice of unsolicited proposal. That can either be in a Florida, the Florida Administration Register or a local paper and we ask that you would then notify local municipalities that may be impacted, if any. The third party architect or engineer is hired by the municipality to review the proposal and oversee the entire construction process, ensuring that what we're building meets all of your needs and requirements. One of the nice advantages of this municipal lease purchase is there's no appropriation clause, an annual appropriation clause. It's not considered statutory debt, so it doesn't re reduce or, or it does not reduce your municipal bond capacity. There's no voter approval or referendum required. Provides budget flexibility. There's no revenue pledge on your part. The lease payment commences after the station is complete. You can finance it for up to 20 years with a fixed rate. And we reserve the right to place that with regional and or national lenders, ones that you would approve prior and with low or minimal issuance costs. Summit will solicit all the finance proposals from the lenders on your behalf. We have an in-house financial specialist that will issue the formal finance RFP and assist your municipality through documentation and funding process. It's an added service that we provide to help walk through all this with no charge to, to the city. The lender will finance 100% of the project. So basically the city would be able to build this new fire station with no money out of hand at this time. That includes all the issuance costs, consultants fees, and all that's placed up front into an escrow account that the construction company then draws down that money as the building is being completed. We pay all of our draws through the escrow agent as the project is completed. The COE does not make a lease payment until the fire station is built and completed. Financing typically completed within three to four weeks, including city commission approval. So it, this is not a long, drawn-out process. Within three to four weeks of your approval, then the financing would be secured with a fixed rate. That's it in a nutshell. Any questions? <laughs> The, clo <clears throat> the closest one here is the city of Boynton Beach has uh, just started this process for $120 million construction of a public services building, which would house fire and uh, police. 
and also their new city hall. Uh, we're also talking with the city of Longwood on the same program for them. We have meetings on Thursday with the uh, county, Flagler County, for a new uh, emergency services complex for them, an EOC center. And we're also talking with Mount Dora. This, the three bay prototype, is that, is that anywhere in central Florida? No, sir, this, these are all brand new prototypes that have been formatted over the last 12 to 16 months. Have any have been constructed yet? No, sir. Any questions? Anybody up on the dust wants to make any comments? What? Oh, yeah, hang on a minute. I'll call them. First, first, no. let's go. Anybody up here have any comments? Not this time. All right. Yes, ma'am. You have to fill out a, you have to fill out another form and come to the podium. Well, I know that's what you have. To, you have to give your name and address and fill out a form. I know, but you got to fill another one out now. <laughs> I just have a question. Name and address. Oh, Sherry Wolf, 607 East Lakeshore Drive. Hey, I'm blonde. you got to think about that. <laughs> no comment. You're also from South Carolina. That's right. <laughs> and Trusty knows. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, do you happen to leave any land at all for animal wildlife. Well, there's Does still three acres remaining in that parcel. Okay, you don't just mow it down. No. Okay, because <laughs> we have a problem here with so many developments that are not leaving any room for the animals. They were here first. They were they were in Sleepy Harbor too before they built those houses. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. All right. Anybody else? What? Well, Rob, you want to make some comments on it before we? No, Mayor, I, I, I know this program is, has done a lot of different cities with different companies um, besides Summit, and I think it's something we should look at. Um, we had talked for several years about building that fourth fire station up in the northwest area of the city, and I think it's a valid option to consider this and consider moving forward with this. I'll, I'll, add, Mayor. This, I'll add it to the other one, okay? I'll save you from filling that. Tell Sherry. Sherry, I'll add it to, to the other one. You don't have to fill that out. That's good. Thank you. All right. Well, yeah. what, what I would say is, okay. what I would say is, it's something we've been talking about for two or three yeah. years for the fire on the north side of town where we got about 1,500 houses going up. And we have, I don't know how many we got up there in total, but John could probably know it's yeah. in John's uh, district. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, we got to have a firehouse somewhere on the north side because we, we're stretched between far and a few of what the, they say you should have. And the citizens up there pay, pay the taxes too. So if this, this works out where we don't have to put any cash out or pay any, any, any and I found out in, this, in the different things we're doing with the building of some of the buildings and stuff, you don't, you run into a lot of over cost and overcharges for this. So that'll, that'll help out. So what I, what I like to see is, is we're gonna get the city to sit down with the attorney and with you guys and work out the, Particulars and then bring it back to us what right. we need to do. All right, sir. Is that all right with you guys? That's fine with I think, us. I think it's a great proposal. I looked at it. I think the rest of them, if you've got a copy, you might want to let all the commissioners get a copy of it and read it. But I think, is that okay, Scott? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, one, one more question. I'm sorry, Mayor. Does, does the financing include the acquisition of the property? Everything, sir. It's one big package, 100% financing. Okay. All right. Now, also in the lease, even though it's called a lease, you, re you the city, gets a, uh, title to the property and the building immediately. Uh, so at the end of the 20 years, at the end of the term, there is nothing really to transfer over. You've already had it on your balance sheet all along. Good deal. All right. So we'll get the city manager and the city attorney to sit down and get with you guys and see what we have to do. All right. All right. Sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. All right, now we're gonna to go to comments from the citizens and the public. I got three different areas. So it's anything that's not on the agenda. If it's on the agenda, then we'll, you'll do the public comments when we do that item. But if it's not on the agenda, then we'll do that now. And I have a couple different things here. One is uh, Glenda Dunn. Okay, 
Mayor, if I may, um, Ms. Dunn asked me, what she would like is for, in front of, it's regarding the Lakeshore plan, but she, right, but she wanted, well, she, want she wasn't gonna come up and here. speak, she just wanted to go ahead and if, so, if we could have um, Al Butler point out to her on yeah. the documents where the bathrooms are going to be, that are located, gonna be close well, to the I front of her house. Well, I do that when she come up to do her talk. She wasn't gonna, she just. You don't wanna talk, Lynn? All right. Well, I, I had your thing here, so. Do you want? Do you want to say anything? No, that's all right. We'll let him. We'll let him. Uh, we'll let him give it out. Here we are. Or show it. Alvin. Just give us your name. And address, Glenn. This is the concern. Glenda Dunn, 18 North Lake Shore Drive, Okoy. What she's talking about is uh, about the park. We're redoing the park by the lake and the bathroom where the bathroom is going to be assigned. I guess is what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Right, one of, the print, one of the plans I recently saw actually had the restroom, public restrooms right across the street from my house, which would, would block the view. But when I started asking questions, they pulled out a bigger plan and it was in a different place. So I would just like someone to go on record as to where the location of that okay. public restroom is gonna be. All right. Okay, yeah, Mr. Butler. Al Butler, Director of Support Services. What you have here is the original concept plan that was approved by the City Commission on February 20th of this year. You can see that it shows a, a fairly long arbor and this was going to be the restroom here and this was sort of a concession stand type thing and then up here is a long pavilion that was going to go out on the boardwalk. Phase one of the park plan uh, that is currently funded includes the construction of this area here, not the boardwalk. The boardwalk is part of phase three. As I said, this is the concept plan. Our 90% plans uh, currently show this configuration uh, for that facility. This is Oakland Avenue here. This is Lakeshore Drive. So here at the end of Oakland Avenue in the place that we showed in the concept plan is a awning. This is open, this is not a closed roof, this is sort of a pergola type structure. It has swings on it and potentially may, we may have chairs, benches out there too that you'd be able to look at the lake. Uh, this is going to be the destination point for the extension, the connector to the West Orange Trail. And you can see the sidewalk that comes down on the north side of Oakland Avenue and then we have parking and a sidewalk that's going in on Lakeshore Drive. So this, this is the awning area. This is where the restroom is located here. You can see that this is a larger structure uh, than what we'd originally shown because at this end we have a concession stand and then the restrooms are down here. The doors into the restroom are at the north end and there is no building shown anymore in this area. So we have moved the, the restrooms substantially further to the north uh, than what they were shown on the concept plan. And this is the basic uh, layout of that building. Uh, we have the concession area here. Lakeshore Drive is at the top. Men's and women's restrooms. And you can see their doors are as far away from Ms. Dunn's property as we could get them. They're on the north side of the building. And the the only access that you see here are just uh, doors that would normally not have passage through them. That's, this is to get into the mechanical room, to the electrical room, and then anyone who's working in the concession stand would have access here. But the actual windows for service are on the lake side. So we have done everything we can to try to eliminate impact on the neighborhood. This is what the building looks like from Lakeshore Drive looking east towards the lake. You can see that the architectural design is similar to that of the Lakeshore Center. Uh, and we're trying to maintain that as our architectural approach uh, to the, all the different architecture in the, in the Lakeshore Park area. All right, Linda. Linda, you want to ask any questions? You need to, is that good? Uh, you want to go on record? 
to move it away from where it was at originally? Is this okay now? Yeah. I just did just say it where we can put it on record. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't look out one day and see a, a, a new toilet being built across the street from my house and not be able to stop it. So if all these people have seen what's going on and we all agree that it's not going to happen, that's all I really, I just need to go on record for this. Okay. That way it's recorded. Yes. Is there a 90% plan? What's that other 10%? <laughs> <laughs> that other 10% is all the stuff we need during permit review process. Gotcha, gotcha. So all right. it's not a new bathroom across the no, street. No, no, no. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. Next is um, Christine Moore. Christine Moore, 2145 Palmcrest Drive, Apopka 32712. I am coming to you today as your school board member who is about to finish up her term. Um, my last day will be about right before Thanksgiving. As, as many of you know, I resigned to run for Orange County Commission. But I, what I wanted to do was just sort of update you. I used to come once a year, and, and so I thought I would come today to speak a little bit about some of the initiatives and things that are going on with your schools in the Coe area. And so uh, you're fairly familiar with the past few years with the construction, and of course we use prototypes, the Spring Lake Elementary and the Coe Elementary are BRPH uh, design facilities. One's a little larger than the other, but we utilize those prototypes to save the taxpayers money. So in, in the course of that time, you've had Spring Lake Elementary to be a new facility. Okoe Elementary School and, of course, uh, Prairie Lake. So that would be three elementary schools. As you know, the school district also has uh, two parcels of land for uh, possible expansion. One is right across from Okoe High School, an elementary school site, which um, we had been about two years away uh, from needing it, but then when, um, th with the addition of several charter schools, then it basically has removed that from the list, and so it's not projected to need that school um, for at least seven to ten years. Uh, there's also a middle school site out on Ingram Road, and I can tell you that there is nothing planned in terms of construction for at least ten years. There is a committee that reviews that monthly, and so if things change, populations accelerate, then uh, things can move up or down on that list according to the need. Everything is need-based. Um, in terms of some renovations at uh, Coe uh, Middle School, you're aware that we worked with you on the security fencing about a year ago and, and went with the upgraded fence to keep with the look and feel that you were trying to accomplish on Blueford. Um, the gym. And I'm, I'm holding my breath a little bit because I've been hearing about this for about three years. But supposedly we are going to see the gym at the middle school going to complete renovation right down to the studs, new windows, and everything. So I'm holding my breath on that one. Um, we had worked together. You had all had talked to me over the years um, about your interest in a vocational tech location. And so I wanted to update you on that because that's probably really the most exciting news that I can bring to you today. So um, the tech centers are now call called Orange Technical College, and then they have their names. So Westside Tech would be the one that's been in Winter Garden. And um, when the citizens passed the, the funding with the half penny and their list was produced back in 2002, it was always that the tech centers were at the end of the list. But we're actually getting to the end of the list, and I can tell you right now that the design standards are in process for that building. It will be for construction trades. There's some exciting talks going on with some other uh, institutions that I'm not really at liberty to, to, to tell you because nothing is completely finalized. Um, OCPS, when they build, it, typically it's a one-year design phase, and then with a building of that size, it would be a one-and-a-half-year construction. So we are looking at 2020 to have that building finalized. And I think most of you know where the parcel is, that it's um, located on Ocoee-Apopka Road, 
uh, adjacent to the high school, which presents tremendous opportunities for your students to dual enroll, get their industry certifications, and go back and forth. So that's exciting. So um, it's right next to the trail, the West Orange Trail, and the 429 and backs up to Coe High School. So that's a real exciting project. And I have to credit your staff for constantly putting a little bird in my ear and talking about doing that and getting that done. So that is going to happen um, without me. It's on the list. You don't have to worry about it. That will happen once I leave. On a more fun and community-based note, um, we just finalized our second Okoe Cardinal Day celebration at the elementary school. And I'm thankful that uh, Commissioner Wilson attended so she can attest to how that was done. And so what our students did, I, I sort of directed the vision, and, but the principal, Dr. Anna Gonzalez, just outdoes herself. I think in a second life she's going to be an event coordinator. But if you had been there, it was an amazing event celebrating trying to bring the children together and, and, and help them recognize the significance of being an Okoe resident. So um, each grade level had a different assignment. Some wrote essays on the history of Okoe. Some did projects. Kindergartners, they made little birds. They made little cardinal birds. Um, the one big art project that was, I would like to request, if, if it meets with your approval that it would be brought down here. The art teacher, Lisa Arnold, who is a proud resident of Okoe, um, came up with a blueprint because we've been talking about celebrating cardinals, but celebrating the passion flower, since that's your logo, that's your theme. And so out of used crayons, they constructed a fairly 24 by 24 piece that looks like a passion flower. It's absolutely beautiful out of used crayons. And uh, the students helped. and. Can tell the art teacher did a little bit. I don't know how many of you remember light bright, but it was like a light bright exercise where they stuck the crayons in to create this passion flower. Uh, my one contribution to all these events is I bring passion flower tea. And I have to tell you that I have not perfected my recipe yet. It still requires a whole lot of grape juice to taste any good. But the children think it's wonderful, so they drink passion flower tea, and then we added uh, blueberry muffins. And so the middle school came over and played, and we had little cardinal birds all over the campus. And then um, Mayor Johnson, we just want to thank you. Uh, one of my most proud moments, I think, in celebrating the history of Okoe and, and helping to build all these schools is, is, you, is you and I collaborating to get that 1922 marble plaque from um, I guess it was the second Okoe Elementary School, and uh, it had been sitting in your, you might want to comment, but sitting in your garage for 30 years, I think. And so you, ca you came to the dedication, and I have this big thing with new schools all over the district. We make a real point to save the old plaques because the students don't always understand what it takes to get a building and what came before. And so on this building, Okoe Elementary, we have the, the plaque from 1979 and then the one that you gave back to us. And so it was quite a feat to get it up there, Mayor, where it had to be encased in a box because it's split, it's cracked, it's you know, almost 100 years old now. And uh, we had to find a load-bearing wall to be able to erect that plaque. So it's outside, the residents can come see all three plaques anytime they want to. We in invite them to come. And with that, that concludes my remarks. If you have any uh, particular questions about any of the schools or plans for the future, I'd be happy to entertain them. Well, what I, what I would like to say is, in, in, in all your time at the school board, in, in all the 30 some years been up here, the, uh, you're the only one out of the school board that's really come out and put a lot of effort and time into our schools, and I appreciate that. I know dealing with you, with the Cardinal name, because our high school used to be the Cardinals, and we kept the Cardinal alive. Uh, dealing with all the schools, if you've always been there and always worked there, they, anybody get the chance to go into the elementary school and see the drawings that the artists did, and up in Spring Lake, that the artists did the walls in there too. It's beautiful, so it's it's a pleasure to have you on the board and working for the city of Okoy. So we appreciate it very much. Anybody thank else you. Can you tell me? Yeah, I, I just wanted to thank you, Christine. We did a lot. And, uh, Spring Lake came out just great, and and I, I wish you good luck in your future and good luck in your race as city commission as a county commission. Thank you. I'd like to, if we could go ahead, 
and as a consensus agreed to bring over that artwork displaying it in City Hall because it was a sure. very it, it was different it was interesting we also have a uh, one coming from Spring Lake that's uh, stars and stripes done with uh, I think it's popsicle sticks it's beautiful so they're gonna bring that also over here so we'll put them all in the lobby I think that's important uh, because the more that the students in the community work together and see themselves as this cohesive uh, place, you know, it, we're just going to raise better children and better citizens. So I appreciate you working with us on these little these little items. And I know Mayor Johnson, you were there the previous year, and, yeah. and I appreciate whenever you can come to the schools. It really makes a difference when the students see you. All right, thank you. Okay, appreciate it. All right. The, the next, th I've got three here for an item that's all the same thing. So if you, if you can, maybe one person, if you're going to make the same comments, you know, it's about the lake level. So, you know, how many people can say how high the water is? <laughs> you can say it's rising, I guess. But, which, <laughs> but I'm going to open it up now for that. We have three here for the same, same thing about the lake level. So we'll start off, uh, like I said, if you can make it short, it's the same thing, you know. So Robert DeRoach. Hi, I'm Bob Derrock, 114 Olympus. I live on the east side of Lake Olympia. Right now our docks are all about a foot underwater. And Stark Lake has drain wells that lower the water on Stark. We're connected with Stark by a 18 inch pipe, I believe it is, 24 inch pipe. And the gate valve is currently closed between the lakes. If that gate valve was open, water would flow from our lake instead of flowing over land, running through people's backyards and flow into Stark Lake and down the drain wells. Now five years ago, we had a meeting to discuss low water levels and what to do to get water to come over to Lake Olympia. And at that time it was decided to open the gate valve and put collars on the two drain wells so that it would raise the level of Stark enough so that water would flow into <coughs> Olympia. Now that has worked very well. Um, but at the time we didn't discuss what do we do if the high water comes along. And uh, so now we're in a situation with high water and I would recommend that we remove the collars on the dry wells temporarily, lower the level of Stark, open the gate valve so water will flow from Olympia into Stark and hopefully that'll keep both lakes low enough to be usable because we're currently in a, a no wake zone uh, situation at the moment and if the two lakes were lowered enough that would give us some buffer in case we have a big tropical storm like North Carolina just had and I would imagine that would give us at least a 12 inch 14 inch buffer in case of large downpours so if we wanted analyze the situation and then have a meeting with concerned members. How many folks here are concerned about that particular? Yeah, so there's at least half a dozen of us here tonight. All right. I want to let the, first of all, I apologize. I was supposed to say this when we started this process. We have a timer. It's in, in public hearings. It's uh, uh, for public citizens comments is three minutes. Well, we, we still set got, the time. I still have yeah. two. You're, you're still good. <laughs> <laughs> we set the timer, so just to let you know, three minutes and then the discussions and the, what I'm gonna do now is you can stop that if you can or let it go with no matter with him he's you just stand there a minute and we're gonna okay. let uh, our Steve Krug is our public works director who handles that so we'll let him sure. answer your questions um, you are correct the lake levels last week were equal we have had the risers on Stark Lake removed for two months uh, yeah. The water has just been that much. There's 1,200 acres that drain into the two lakes, 400 into Lake Olympia, 800 into Stark Lake. So the drain wells are not quite keeping up with the inflow? There, there's just that much water. Okay. We're fortunate to have the drain wells. Right. However, this is the, we went out there and looked at the overflow structure today between the lakes okay. at Admiral Point. This is the first time we've seen where Stark is lower than Lake Olympia by right. about six inches, so we opened the gate valve this afternoon. I don't. I was I was there just three hours ago, and it's as far as I can tell, it looks like it's closed. It should be open. Really? We're okay. Open. I don't know if the water level is so high, maybe I couldn't see it. But it. Well, we opened it. I know the guys went out there and opened it this afternoon. Okay. However, the lake level you have now, it's only going to normalize by about 12 inches. 
that would be enough the, to get it below most stocks. That's what we're looking at. Even though okay. Stark may get lower, uh, Lake Olympia is only going to drop about 12 inches, and then we got to rely on evaporation yep. and percolation. Okay. But, you know, excellent idea, and okay. we're moving forward with it. All right, thanks. All right. Now I have Steve Bauman, if you want to say it. I mean, uh, same thing? We, okay, okay. Here's the deal. If he can give you his card, no. He can give you his card tonight and his phone number where we can you can get with him and talk with him also with what's going on at the at the lake. So I call that Fish Lake. I don't call it Lake Olympia. It's Fish Lake. Huh? Fish Lake. Yeah, Fish Lake. Yep. <laughs> That's back in the old days. Uh, also, Mr. Quinn. Uh, Eddie Quinn, 1081 Coastal Circle, Admiral Point. Uh, thanks, Mayor and Commissioners, for listening to our lake level discussion. And uh, uh, I think Rob had a good point that, you know, in 2013 we were here and we were discussing uh, the lack of water in there. And I don't know that we had uh, the foresight to see where it is today. I know that I took Rosemary on a tour uh, three weeks ago. We're, I don't know, we're six feet in height past the 100 year mark. So I'm what I'm worried about is not today, because it sounds like there was one discussion on the collar being taken off, but let's maybe take a different approach where in 30 days uh, we work with Steve and do a workshop and come up with some additional solutions. So when we're going into the rainy season next year, we're not starting above the 100 year mark. So right now I think the last person who was up here agreed that, hey, the collar was or was not working. I think we, we're owed a little bit more than that and a workshop that gives us maybe a couple of different solutions is what I'd ask for. Um, we're kind of limited on the solution for draining the lake because there's nowhere to pump it. We're fortunate we have two drain wells and we have hit the 100 year flood level with the amount of rain we've received this year. In fact, we two, received- Two months ago. Yeah, which it keeps draining in. It's a large base. Yep, absolutely. Um, we're just getting more rain than we ever had. And I, under, I understand that, but have you looked at architectural firms that can come out and put a third drain well in Stark? Have you looked at alternatives to put in a, a drain well in Lake Olympia? So I think there's options, and we, I don't know that we're going to solve them tonight, but what I'd like for is the chance to have a workshop and have you bring in maybe St. John's uh, Water Management District and some other solutions so we have options, not just, we're, hey, it's raining a lot. Well, right now we're working with St. John's. They don't want to talk to us about drain wells. They're controlled by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. We're trying to see if there are any old drain wells because they are not encouraging any new ones. Um, we're trying to actually find where were all the historical drain wells within the city and see if we can even reactivate them. Um, so would 30 days give you enough time to work with them in a workshop? Probably not. Okay. Where this, this may take several months to try and get DEP to come around to our thinking. We're looking to, we've got St. John's helping us in Orange County actually to provide all the backup data on what we have historically and then see can we, if there was ever one on, I don't know that there was an existing one on Lake Olympia. Um, we are looking at some other lakes in the area to see what we can do. If they'll at least let us establish an existing one, then that'll open the door to put in new ones if, they'll, if they're open. So you're saying 45, 60 days we can do a workshop, and at that time you can search out uh, your, through your vendor list other architectural firms that can, or engineering firms that can possibly come up with solutions? Because we can't be the only one in, in, with this issue in Central Florida. We are unfortunately bound, we have 12 constrained basins, basically 12 bathtubs, mm -hmm. buckets out there that water doesn't go anywhere. So anywhere we can get a um, drain well in, that's the only re relief that St. John's wants to talk to us about at this point. So, so in Lake exhausted. Bennett, where they're pumping the water out into the sewer system, is that an option for us? That's going out into Lake Lilies because okay. it's flowing over there. We've, we're working with the state on that. So but that's another option for us too. So my point not, is I think 
there we give is them a place time to pump that the there's a, you can do a workshop and bring up a, a solutions. There's always a solution. It just Perfect. depends how much money we want to spend. That's Absolutely. what we're looking at and what can be permitted. Sure. I'm trying to talk the fire department into buying a helicopter with a big <laughs> bucket, but they don't seem to be buying it. But that's where I'm at. <laughs> All right, okay. you got them to lie. There, there's a, they'll, they'll, we'll try to have it. Don't give me any I, ideas. We can let you know what we're finding out as we go. I'd rather ha no, have some solutions get, that we can work I, with. I'm more than we're happy. We're looking for solutions. I just, I want to make sure if we all get together that we actually have something mm -hmm. productive to tell you. At right. this point, we're not running into any engineers that want to even discuss this, so we're talking directly with the state. Eddie, you, I can follow you, up with okay. Steve, and if a workshop is appropriate, if we're looking 60 days out, I'll follow up with you okay. and we can plan the workshop. I know I planned it last time when yep. we were low water and never thought we'd be in this point, but um, I'm more than happy to look at that once Steve gives me, we have some information that we can actually have a workshop to, for, with some constructive information. That's great, and if you need, if you need a list of engineers, uh, companies that could possibly provide it, I'm happy to provide those. Anybody things. else you can recommend, we'd okay. be happy to talk to. We're talking to quite a few right now. Great, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, the um, next, next, and the public here inside, three minutes, we'll have a timer on. It'll be Sherry Wooster, Miss South Carolina. Miss South Carolina. Who? No, I didn't. We, that was our, no, God bless. It was the guy, our guy, talking. When our man comes up to talk with your talking, I will let him talk and not count I your time. I don't know which one I'm All supposed right. to talk in. All right. Okay, Sherry Walski, 607 East Lakeshore Drive, Akoi, Florida, Sleepy Harbor Drive. Uh, one, uh, one thing that doesn't get to count is I wanted to tell the people in Olympia that live in the Olympia subdivision we have had our boathouse. We, we've lived here 30 to 35 years, I think. Our boathouse has been a foot high. We had to move the lawnmower twice since we've been here. So y'all shouldn't be complaining that much. I mean, water goes up and down. It's according to how much rain you get. Okay, I'm here to talk about because we had a code enforcement officer named Teresa that came by the 13th, which was Thursday and gave us a code violation paper. On Friday, I tried to call the code enforcement people to find out exactly what we were supposed to do, to no avail, because he was on vacation out of the country for a month. And then Friday afternoon, I get in the mail a letter saying, from the city saying that it has to be fixed by the 19th, which is tomorrow. What they want us to do is, we've got a boat trailer. What they want us to do is build a six foot fence for my three foot two inch boat trailer to cover it up. I can't put it, I can't put my boat in the backyard because it still has to be covered up. They want it on all sides, so I'll have a big box for a little trailer and a wall this high. At any rate, uh, yeah, I, you couldn't possibly be built by then because uh, for it was Friday afternoon, the city was already closed. You got to go down Monday to get a permit to build anything. You know how long that takes in a coy. And uh, then you got to get it fixed and have somebody come out and inspect it on the 19th, which is tomorrow. Well, I'm the one that's building. Nobody else, me, I can't do it that quick. And if it's not done, they can charge me $250 a day. Nice to have a city that's threatening me, Rusty. No time whatsoever. That, that's not good, no time. You give me t longer than that to pay my water bill. And let's see. Where am I now? I probably skipped over most of it. But uh, we, have, we have a nice neighborhood. Sleepy Harbor is a pretty nice neighborhood. Everybody tries to keep their yards, their, their houses, and everything up nice. It we'll looks give, good. 
All right, I'm going to give you nobody, 30 more seconds. Nobody could even see my trailer. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. Nobody could even see my trailer until my big azalea died this year. So I haven't even had time to put a big one in. I tried putting a smaller one in, but it died. It wasn't an azalea, though. It was a gardenia, which they don't like cement that close to the house. So. All right, don't go anywhere. Okay. Stay right there. Hal, will you explain her process with the letters? And then we'll discuss the actions we need to do. And I did get an email from your my husband. Your husband. And the last time I ever had to talk in front of anybody, I. No, nah, you've been up here before. No, no I met. No, the first time I ever had to talk in front of anybody, I got up and looked at 16 people looking at me, ex expecting me to solve the problems of the world. Yeah. And I'm thinking, 32 eyes staring yeah. at me. God, what am I going to do? <laughs> nothing, All right. Nothing here. I call. I said, my husband's going to tell you. <laughs> All right. well, I I got an email from your husband suggesting we look at changing part of the ordinance to say four feet. Well, one of the problems is you'd have to have it. There's a certain height that's on there. It says six foot. But like he said, his, his boat's only 26 inches or something. It's three and if you did a four inches. foot fence, which we can suggest that, you have to change ordinances and stuff. But I'm going to let Al explain that. All right. OK. Uh, I empathize with your situation, and I do want to make some correction. So after the meeting, I'd like to get some more information to you from you about who you spoke with on Friday. I've tried to locate that person and been able to I, She wasn't too nice. I didn't All like right. her. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. She was sort of short. Right. But what I did want to tell you is that uh, we, we generally do not address these issues unless there's a citizen complaint. And on August 13th, a citizen came into the office uh, and complained about uh, four properties. That and, wasn't and ours, though. In that they came no, it was not. And what happens is uh, we have to we go out into the neighborhood and we can't just selectively enforce the people they complain about. We have to address that issue with each affected homeowner that's in a similar situation. It eventually wound up to be eight properties that were addressed with various letters uh, ad talking about their problems. We had, in addition to boat trailers, we also had uh, inoperable be vehicles in the front yard, uh, commercial trucks parked in the yard, those types of things. So that there were, yeah, there were other issues that, there. And the, they were all contacted initially with a, a voluntary uh, notice. It's either a community notice saying, this is what the standard are, just want to let you know about it, that you have uh, an issue here. Uh, voluntary compliance. Uh, when that doesn't work after a couple of weeks, they then send a notice of violation. They give you additional time uh, to, uh, to correct the issue. Uh, and then from there, it goes to the Code Enforcement Board. And there's at least a 30-day waiting period for that. Uh, so we I can't, don't think can't, they waited for me. We can't get you uh, <laughs> connected with uh, Ms. Rodriguez, who was the code officer associated with that. She was very nice. She was OK. And uh, as always, we are following the direction of the city commission. Well, how do we uh, get that changed? I mean, this is a life for a community we live in. Yes. And, uh, and the she's the woman I talked to on Friday at the, at the city hall. Oh, we couldn't even put our boat trailer in the backyard without hovering it all up with a six foot fence. I mean, that's strange. The, uh, the ordinance calls for screening on the front and the side. If it's in the backyard, you would only need side screening because the building itself. Who am I screening it from? You're screening it from your neighbors and from the street. This is part of the land development code of the city of Okoye that was uh, adopted many years ago. How do we get ago. that changed? Uh, you would have to talk with the city planner okay. uh, and the, they would be able to talk to you about the process. Potentially you could utilize a, a variance process uh, in addition to changing the ordinance. Because it does say a six foot opaque yeah, fence. Yeah, but it really, I mean, really and truly, it does not look bad out there. It does not. That's Somebody's why, just. That's why we wait until pleasing. there's a complaint for these types of things. Because mm -hmm. absent a complaint, then we're looking at that's the neighborhood norm and it's acceptable to the people in the neighborhood. But once we get complaints, it's sort of like enforcing the speed limit. When somebody complains that cars are speeding on the street, we send the police out there and they start writing tickets. 
I don't and mind this is, that, this is but I don't like situation. the speed bump that we pay five thousand so dollars for. So ultimately, the people who make the decision that decisions I told Rosemary about are the elected officials, and if they $5, want to change the ordinance, they can. Five thousand dollars for speed bump. Let it talk, okay? <laughs> so. Uh, potentially the city planner would be able to talk to you about possible approaches to this and with the the city commission's direction we'd be able to bring back something to them that, that provides some flexibility there such as a four foot versus a six foot fence depending on the nature that's something that the city commission could consider and when are they going to start it, charging me well the letter that was sent to you simply talks about what could happen uh 250 is the maximum fine that's allowed under state law. You're actually not being threatened with any fine today. There's, it tells you what's going to happen down the future if we don't get this resolved. I have the letters here. Uh, so there's a hearing process that goes through uh, and a citizen such as yourself, code enforcement board, uh, would look at the situation and they would decide how long you should have uh, to correct the problem. Uh, and if you don't correct the problem within that time period, what the penalties might be from that. Uh, and that's uh, a, a jury of your peers, if you will, uh, that look at those issues. Is, uh, is Mike here? Mike Rumor should be here, yes. Well, Mike needs to give her a card. Right, we Mike, need to talk to Give her a card and let her come meet with you and right. discuss how so to do it. So af after this uh, session here, Mike and I would like to talk well, to I have one more. With a, I have one more with another citizen, Mike too. Rumor. So right. we'll, when we get through with this next citizen, it, the group of you can meet with Al and Mike. Right. Okay. And, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Hogan. Um, my name is Barbara Hogan, and my brother and sister and I, we own a home at 505 East Lakeshore in Ocoy in Sleepy Harbor. And I did want to say we did not receive a letter. Um, my brother was hold handed. Hold on, hold on. Ma'am. Jerry. Shh. Jerry. I know. Jerry. We. Shh. All right. You You're taking it away. <laughs> we have. <laughs> we used to. Go ahead, Ms. Hogan. Um, I just wanted to say we did not receive a letter from um, the city of Oakley. We had gotten. A community um, notice. A door yeah, that was hung on, on the door. And um, I'd spoken to the mayor and, and to Miss Wilson, and um, my mother built this house in Sleepy Harbor almost 40 years ago. And the trailer that's in question has been parked on the side of the house for 25 years. And so when I had expressed, you know, um, after all these years to, uh, you know, receive a code violation, at what point does it become complacent that something is okay? I mean, it's not like the trailer had just been parked there last week or just uh, a year or so ago. So in listening to your conversation here, it seems like, can we apply for a variance? Uh, because the city has to understand also when something has gone on for years, decades, two and a half decades now, and we have spoken to almost all the people that were in that, um, that complaint that was placed and people are very upset. And I think the other thing that comes into question, this is gonna cost money. And a lot of the people that have lived in that neighborhood have lived there a long time. Some of them are on fixed incomes, our, you know, our brother is, and my sister and I, we are his PLA and his guardians and so forth. So we manage that, but this is a, a hardship to go ahead and go back, you know, financially. And just like Sherry was saying, she's gonna be the one that's, that's going to be um, building it. Um, I did speak to the, um, uh, president of the Homeowners Association, and I guess on page 91 of 131 pages of guidelines, there is a small two-sentence um, statement there that um, this is not allowed, um, a trailer or whatever. And I found it ironic, and I do have to say I did not read all 131 pages. You know, I just even when I didn't have anything to do, I wasn't gonna read 131 pages of that. But um, it, there needs to be some kind of um, dealing with this issue instead of just saying you 
have a certain number of days or weeks to deal with this. This is going to be the cost and so forth. When something has been um, parked in an area, Sherry, how long has yours? Ours, 25 plus. So uh, we need to have a different resolution than saying, okay, start building all these things. And that's why we're asking if there's some kind of a variance, can we do something? Because all the homes there on Lakeshore Drive are in very nice shape, I think. Don't you, Sherry? Well, the nature of this situation is the Land Development Code says shall, and that eliminates flexibility for staff. I'd really let uh, the city planner speak more about this, uh, what the process might be on that. It may, this particular one may not be uh, amenable to the variance process. It may be that it requires more of an ordinance change to accommodate that. But the flexibility that you're seeking is not currently provided in the ordinance, either for the enforcement uh, through the code board or through the land development code. Then we need to seek something. We need, such as the other gentleman was saying, options about the water. We need to have options because it's a boating community Something has been part 25, 35 years, and these other people, multiple years. No one that's on that list parked their boat or their trailer there last week, or even just in the past year. So um, the only thing that I know that's carved in stone are the Ten Commandments. So I think if we could address something about some kind of a change of consideration, you know, well, uh, in this. I think you'll have to do the same thing, and I. It's Rosemary, uh, Commissioner Wilson's district, so I don't know if she, you have a problem, do you have a way to solve it? I don't have a way to solve it at this point be because when it's a land development code, when it's set, unless something gets changed, and I don't know if we, if we change it, the length of time it takes is going to solve your problem with the length of time to put a fence up or if a gate. So, I mean, Mike, can you answer that one? Yeah, the, the requirement is the, the city permits up to two trailers or two boats or an RV up to 36 square feet. It must be kept behind the front building line. And it's got to be shielded, it says, to opacity. It doesn't say 100% opacity, but opacity. So it does provide some opportunities there. And realistically, that's the reason for this requirement is so in the front view of the neighborhood, you don't have a lot of different objects littering or you're Creating, you're creating an aesthetic view that is more pleasing. So that is the requirement. There is a process, as the Land Development Code uh, affords a variance process where you can go, plead your case, show how your property, potentially your community is a little bit different. There's criteria in the code for achieving a variance, but again, it's still a vote before the city commission. And, and it, this affords the opportunity to show how your situation is different it may be able to res achieve opacity in some where you can't see through in, in, in some level, 50% opacity. That might be determined to be sufficient on a case-by-case -case basis, but it lets you make that, have that opportunity for kind of your day in court. If we are going to seek something like this, then why would it not be allowed for an extension of, if we're pursuing in this direction for a variance, why can't there be an extension of they're working in this direction to try and get this ordinance okay. changed. Yes, good question. Are we just they do. So cut off at the brow? No, what happens is the code enforcement officer will check in with the, the property. Once you show good faith that you're moving forward with some remedy, action, action yeah. they will postpone it. They check with me when is the case going to be heard by the first meeting. Whatever they, they provided you the application and they just keep continuing it out. Is so that something that we would need to post or is that something that they would check because we don't want people calling again and saying, okay, there's no action over here at 505. Right. The process would be when you apply for a variance, when it gets to a point where we schedule it for a public hearing, we will put an ad in the paper, we will post a sign on your property and send a 300 foot notice. That'll let the residents know that there is an action happening on your, at your property. But with regards to posting something for the public to say, there, there's no other posting to kind of keep people up to date. Okay. So, all right. May, uh, may I also say that if it, this is something that goes before the Board of Adjustment, correct? Uh, planning and zoning now. But you yes. may want to realize the cost involved 
and outweigh it to the point of having the fence because the cost involved is you're paying for yeah, the, the noticing to residents, which, what is the, the cost? There's a flat fee of $250 for the variance. There's a, so there, I mean, please count that into what you're figuring. I will just say regarding your code enforcement, code enforcement from my experience of working with different residents, they've been very flexible. Mm -hmm. I realize that the code enforcement director is not available right now. Um, but there's other folks there who I've been speaking with. And if they know that you're moving in the direction of accomplishing this task, they're working with everyone. We're, we're, yeah, it's not an issue that we're trying to be against you, but and, exactly. And we, the other factor is that please remember that I know that you have deed restrictions. The city doesn't enforce those deed restrictions. That's between you and your HOA, but your HOA may come, may make a decision to override us because of the deed restriction. Um, I understand the plight you're having. I do understand that when you've been doing this for so long. 25 years. Sometimes <laughs> it takes a resident from another neighborhood, sees that you have it, they got nailed for it, for the lack of a better word, and they say, well, if I have to put a fence up, why does other people don't have, why do, not, why do they not have to put a fence up? So, but I do want you to realize that doing the variance does add a cost to it. I guess the only other, or the last statement is, it seems like at some point when something has been there so long, there would be some type of grandfathering that mm -hmm. well, that it has been allowed this sorry. long, you know. I, I, I'd hate to say this, and I, I went and talked to him, and I, I understand, I, I've been going through there for years, because I used to deliver mail in there, and I never bothered me, but the problem is, everywhere in town has been doing it for years. There's mm -hmm. places everywhere that has a code. If you if you rode down any street in this city, you'll get right a code issue up. So it, it's always when a neighbor right turns it in is when it starts the action. So what well, maybe with the staff working with you and we can figure out even to work on the ordinances where we change them around. So when we do that we can address those issues. But uh, I don't know if Rob with this circumstances for the permits, for the two or three little permits, we would not have those and not have them pay for a permit to put that up? Uh, yeah, if that's, if that's the direction that they were going to go, I mean, it'd be up to the commission if you wanted to um, waive the permit fees for something like that, we could certainly do that. At least do something. I mean, it's, I, like I said, it's, if you don't have any kind of codes, there's some problems. There's everywhere in town there's a problem. Cars parking in yards. I, I go down Lakeshore, and there's one guy's got three or four cars parked in his yard, you know, all over the place. So what do you do? There's a code that says you can't do that. So what we need to do is see if we can get, we can when you get together with the people, come see Mike and work on changing the ordinance to maybe address the defense height for the boat height or things like that. But at least we can maybe waive the uh, fee for the permit fee if you have to put that gate up. Okay. Thank you. You won't give him, give my, give her your card. He'll get your card. <coughs> All right. All right. So, presence of seat. Where am I at? Staff report. Anybody else from the Where's citizens? The any more comments <laughs> to anything that's not on the agenda? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, staff reports. Just one item there for item number four, which is on the consent agenda, the uh, approval of the second amendment to the development agreement with Fountains West. Um, you do have a new, a copy of a new agreement in front of you for the developer agreement and uh, staff has provided that to make a ministerial change. Um, I believe the, the name of one of the companies in there was incorrect. So you do have the copy in front of you, small change. Um, basically the remainder of the agreement is the same as what was originally provided. And that's all I have. All right, anything else? All right, commissioner's comments. Uh, Commissioner Grogan. Nothing at this time, thank you. Commissioner Wilson. I'm going to ask that item five be um, separated from the consent agenda as I'm unable to vote on that item and I will be completing form 8B saying that I have a conflict because one of the items is with my employer. Do what now? Item five. We have to oh, you want vote to? on it separately. Okay. So I, right. I can't pull vote it on it. Pull it and then vote on it. All pull right. it. Pull it and then, yeah. Commissioner Furster. 
just a quick report. Um, I attended the uh, Municipal Advisory Committee for the uh, Orlando Metro Plan last week. And just an update on the one item that we have on the transportation improvement project, that's the Silver Star Road extension. We have received funding for the uh, planning effort of that, and that's well underway. And speaking with the planning department today, that that is taking place, and they're working with Metro Plan, and they should push that project along as fast as possible. As of now, we don't really have any dates on construction or uh, any anything further out than that. But they will be reporting to us, our planning department will be reporting to us uh, pretty soon on their progress with the uh, planning. And that's all. One. All right. I'll have a few, a few here. Coffee with a Cop is tomorrow, September the 19th, from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. at McDonald's on West Colonial Drive. Join your neighbors and police officers for coffee and conversation. Uh, Commissioner Oliver, who's absent tonight, is holding a town hall meeting for his area, District 4, at September the 24th on a Monday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at City Hall. Discussions will then tell what's happened in District 4 and in different parts of town in his first 100 days. The final budget here it is next Wednesday, September the 26th at 6 p.m. here in City Hall. Residents will be provided with the opportunity to voice their opinions or concerns regarding the city's proposed budget for fiscal year 2018-2019. All right, consent agenda. We're pulling item five. We pull in number five. More motion to approve all but item five. Second. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Grogan, seconded by Commissioner Furster. Let's vote. Mr. Oliver's absent. All right. And, and now number five. A motion. Motion to approve item five. Uh, with Commissioner Wilson. With Commissioner Wilson. Yes. All right. And a second. Motion made by Commissioner Grogan, seconded by Commissioner Furster, with uh, Commissioner Wilson uh, abstaining. abstaining. Let's vote. Motion carries three votes with Commissioner Wilson abstaining and Commissioner Oliver absent. All right. You're so used to doing it. All right. Number 12. The Cole Boulevard subdivision preliminary and final subdivision plan. City Manager Rumor. Continue uh, to a date to be determined. Really Continue to. All right. Sorry about that. They're putting it off. Good. <laughs> all right. First read of ordinance. First reading of ordinance amending the land development code, adding a definition for collection bins and collection trailers. This is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, amending the City of Ocoee Land Development Code, amending Section 2 4 of the City of Ocoee Land Development Code, creating a definition for the term collection bin or collection trailer, amending specific regulations, including Section 6 14 of the City of Ocoee Land Development Code relating to commercial and industrial development regulations to include collection bins and collection trailers, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for an effective date. All right. This, um, this first reading? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, All right. The first reading, we, we, we have the public comments at the next meeting on uh, August, the th no, that's wrong. October the 2nd. That's the wrong date. October the 2nd. All right. I'm going to take a five minute break.
we're going to turn the meeting back. We're going to start with uh, item 14. City Commission selection of the preferred option for providing temporary housing for the Human Resources Department pending construction of a new city hall. Support Service Director Butler. He disappeared. Where's Al? Al, you're up. I know. <laughs> Four choices. Yeah. Okay. Four choices. We have a series of dominoes that are about to start falling with constructing our new city hall. And the first thing that has to happen is we're moving human resources. Human resources are located in the western end of the City Hall Annex right now. And that's because we're gonna be moving the employee clinic from uh, a house that we remodeled several years ago on Oakland over to that space. And so the first thing we need to do is move human resources. That has to be done uh, by January of 2019. So we have time to move the clinic by March, with the expectation that we start construction on the new city hall in the March-April time frame next spring. So, we looked at a lot, many different alternatives. We looked at all of the existing city property, such as the house at the corner of McKee and Bluford. Uh, that's gonna cost about $60,000 just to try to rehab that building where it can be occupied reliably. Uh, we then looked at rental property uh, office buildings around the city, uh, and they are fairly expensive. We're looking at 18 to 24 months uh, being occupied there. Uh, so that was anywhere from 52 to $133,000, the high end being retail space that was vacant in the West Oaks Mall. Uh, we also looked at portables. You can rent a portable that's fairly much an empty box uh, that you then have to build out on the interior. So all of these spaces to some degree had us building the space inside uh, sort of an empty space like uh, where you, you were in a shopping center and it was an empty space and you have to put in the restrooms and the walls and the offices and carpet and those types of things. So that's where most of that cost comes from. Uh, the fourth alter third alternative we looked at was potentially to go into the east end of the City Hall Annex in the space that Senator Bracey currently occupies uh, that that office space would need to be reconfigured a little bit, but it takes the least amount of work. Our major cost there is not so much money uh, out of our pocket, except it'll be money not coming into our pocket and that we get rent uh, from Senator Bracey uh, on the order of $1,000 a month. Uh, so that would be a revenue we would forego. We also then had a fourth option presented to us recently uh, where property is available at the Lakeshore Drive in of McKee Street. Uh, and this was attractive to us because uh, instead of putting money into a rental space that we'll never get back, uh, this would be a space that we would own uh, and be able to occupy for the period of time that was necessary for a relocation of human resources. And then once they moved out of that space into City Hall, it'd be ready uh, to use or sell it. Uh, we got uh, good price, I think, on it relative to prices in the neighborhood uh, for developable lots. Uh, so uh, it seemed to staff that a tangible asset would be a better way to go in terms of uh, it's gonna cost a little more upfront, but we'll have more when we get to the end and we could recover 100% of our cost, uh, assuming the market pretty much stays flat. So those were the four options we had. Uh, renting commercial office space did not really seem like a good idea. Neither was uh, a portable, and then that gave us the two more viable options, which was uh, purchasing the property, remodeling it, uh, using it as office space at McKee and Lakeshore Drive, or uh, taking the space that's currently occupied by Senator Bracey. Their lease runs out the end of November, uh, and reconfiguring that as office space for human resources. So staff is open to your direction, any questions you may have. All right, um, you want me to open it up to the public question? All right, 
I'm going to open it up with, uh, I have some uh, 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 comment sheets. Uh, Hector. Yes, sir. Okay. Come on up. Hey everyone, Hector Augusto, 125 East McKee Street, the property uh, uh, number three. <laughs> uh, first of all, I just wanna thank everyone here for all the work that you guys do. Um, we moved into the McKee Street property, uh, my wife and I and kids, around January of this year. And uh, it was a really good experience for us because we essentially got a little bit of, a bit of healing. Uh, presently, my, my only purpose here essentially is just to propose to possibly choose one of the other three options. Uh, I'm all for progress, so you know if, if the, the, the house on McKee Street is the better option, I understand that, and uh, I've worked something out with you know, Roger Freeman, the landlord, really good, great guy, been really great with us. So if that's the option that the city wants to go with, then you know, we'll make do. The only reason I'm speaking here is only because my personal situation uh, with my wife, she is very chronic, uh, ill, she just, uh, she just she just underwent a procedure about two months ago where she survived cancer and uh, right now we had scheduled ourselves in October to have uh, some family over to help her out with her next procedures which essentially will work on her liver she has liver and pancreas issues and the goal is to have our family work with her and she will begin uh, uh, a medicine pro a medical program to help her heal so my uh, my initial plan for from October it's like a three-month plan from October all the way to you know our early next year was to you know have some family over help her out with that help me out with the children and all that so this would essentially kind of throw us off a little we'll have to move out um, but uh, the, the only thing again if that's the the option that the city wants to do that's fine we'll work it out but uh, I, I just encourage you know you to look at the other options to see if anything else might be possible from what I can tell uh, from the four options, it seems like the McKee Street, although it can be a property, can be sold later on. Uh, just from the paperwork, it, it looks like it's possibly the more expensive option at the moment. I could be wrong, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to encourage uh, everyone here to possibly consider other options. But if not, we, you know, my family is definitely willing to make the move out of McKee Street for the city, and uh, that's all I have to say. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk about it in a few minutes. We'll let it go ahead and get with everybody here and let them speak. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Nielsen, I have, I have a copy of, um, I guess two copies here of your talk for the record. Well, that's what I'm going to be reading, but uh, <laughs> let me start. Uh, by thanking you all for the service that you provide to our city. My name is Tim Nielsen. I have lived in Ocoee all my life. I attended Ocoee schools from first grade until my graduation in 1970. I am a retired Orange County Schools educator. 14 years of my 35 year career were at Ocoee Elementary. My wife Joy is also a retired Orange County School educator. 25 of her 31 years of service were at Ocoee Elementary. We currently live at 109 East McKee Street. We have lived there since 1989. Before that, we lived still in Ocoee on Cavalero Court. I am definitely not in favor of option three on item 14 of your agenda for this meeting. I feel that it would be the beginning of the end for our beloved neighborhood that I share with so many longtime residents as the Jacksons, the Hagers, the Marsons, the Fields, and many others. I realize that in the past decade or so, the city of Ocoee has been acquiring property in our old historic community of Marion Park. I believe option three of item 14 is a plan for acquiring more of that property guised as an option for creating a temporary home for the Human Resources Department. I understand that growth and what can be termed progress is inevitable, but I'm not willing to see it if it is at the expense of the neighborhood that I love so deeply. Mine and the homes of my neighbors 
are much more than properties to find the most proficient use for by a downtown improvement agenda. Not only that, but as it is explained in the meeting agenda, I don't think it is even the most financially prudent option. As a longtime Okoye taxpayer, I find that reason enough to oppose option three. Thank you. All right, we'll put this in record there. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And all right, now will you, anybody else? Anybody else in the neighbors? I know. I see you, Don. Can I read it? We have one resident who didn't want to get up. Do what? She didn't want. She wasn't. We can enter it into the record, yeah. And she wanted me to read what she had said. If that's agreeable. What's the difference in reading this and putting it in the record? Well, just so you understand where she, what her comments are. Or I'll read them when it's my time. All right, read it. Okay. She is not. This is one of our residents that lives on uh, Lafayette. Margie Cox. They live on Lafayette. I'm not sure the number. Lafayette. 137 Lafayette and she's not interested in option number three she is in interested in option number four clearly what she writes is clearly the least expensive smartest option is four not to renew the lease for Senator Bracey who could easily be moved into a few rooms of the Withers McGuire house which would make an elegant home for his office and staff or into an available commercial space inside the city and that I'll give that to you after All right, we're going to bring it up here to the uh, dais to let everybody talk. Somebody's radio is on or something. Just, just to, and I, Mr. Nelson, I know, I know where you're at. I know my father-in-law and my wife grew up right there. Nobody's wanting to take away that area. I have to tell you that for a fact. You know, nobody. I think one of the things happened when we when we got into this back a while back. It was brought up about moving, Mr. Uh, Senator Bracey and the other person where we could move them in there because it come up about going out to the shop, uh, mall and we'd have to rent a place and it was 200 something thousand dollars, which is stupid when we have the space here. But somebody brought up, didn't want to do that. They wanted to leave them here, not have them move. So that's what led us into going out and looking at other alternatives. So whether we decide on that, we'll figure it out tonight. But that's where it all come from because nobody wanted to take and vote to move Mr. Se I keep saying Mr. Senator Bracey and um, Representative Brown out of our buildings over there, which we would be plenty of space for our people to go to. I would never want to see anything in commercial past where Oakland comes down over. Never. I mean, we're looking at right now. And I don't know if I know Commissioner Wilson knows, and we've talked about it, was redoing all those brick streets and giving the citizens an option if they want the brick or asphalt, which I hope they want the brick. You know, yeah. So that's what we're going to, I asked them to send out a notification to everybody where they can say, hey, let's keep the brick streets. I know it's a pain sometimes, but we could do away with those curbs on the side and keep the brick streets and maybe fix that. I think it'd be a lot better. So I know, I know the gentleman at the end of your street, uh, the piano player, Everybody seems. Yeah, to, everybody drives. Everybody drives through his yard, so I understand. So we're not here to try to take away anything from that neighborhood. I, like I said, my wife's been part of that all her life. So her family. So I would never do that. So all right, what we're going to do is open it up and figure out what we need to do. Um, yes, sir. Come on up to the podium. One thirteen. What's your address? I know I delivered mail to your father. <laughs> He's not with us anymore. But, yeah. um, I also, when when the the amount of money that's talked about that house, it's I mean that's not to knock your house, but um, that roof is old. The air conditioning is pretty much non-existent. There's not parking. You know, it, it's not just like you can move into that place. There's going to have to be some money put into it, not just the $250 for the purchase. It, 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 it's a good price for it, but I mean, it's more than probably what the appraisal is. But we, no, I know, I know. But the problem is nowadays, anybody can buy. You go down to uh, Richard's house on the corner, they paid 200 and almost 250 for that house. 
the little house, you know, Miss. Uh, they paid two hundred five, but they well, put they put they put a, a lot, lot of money into it. Into it. But we're yeah. we're we're going to discuss all that. So all right. I, I know I know what you're talking about. We don't want to. But I know Roger was planning on building another house on that other lot. Is what he was talking about doing. He's putting another lot, building a house. I attended that meeting too. Huh? <laughs> I attended that meeting too. But. Yeah. All, all right. right. Well, let us have that form when you get through. Okay. Give it to, get, you give it to him. You can give it. Yeah. Give, all right, we're going to start the comments. I'll start with, um, you got somebody else? Well, when we, we, we well, let's, let's let them talk and then we'll get to the questions, okay? Uh, Commissioner Grogan. Um, from my understanding and our discussions and what we're doing here, is the properties that are over there, we would, we have no intentions of making it commercial, putting in buildings, putting in offices, nothing like that. As a matter of fact, what we're encouraged to do is to widen, uh, um, excuse me. Well, here, hold on, just. A boat right, dock, a boat dock is in the water. Hold on, hold on a minute, I'm, I'm gonna run the meeting, okay? Mr. Nielsen, I, I'll give you the time, now I gotta let him talk. That's all right. You know how that is in the classroom. You made the yes, kids sir. be quiet a minute. So, <laughs> but just just a minute. We'll let you talk. Okay. All right. All right, John. So the acquisition of the properties over there, especially that last block of properties, as it's available to the city to purchase, we're going to widen out the park. Our intentions are to make the make it greener, giving it back to the city, giving it back to the citizens, and opening up the park areas bigger. We're not, we're not, we're not going to be building on the land. The boat docks are different. It's in the water. And, and that's not even finalized at, at this point. So that, that's what, that's my intentions and my thought up here. Uh, so as in buying the, the property itself, I th still think personally, I still think it's viable for us to own the property and, and allow the gentleman to live, his family to live in it and not turning into that. Uh, I'm all for that. And then when all, as the future goes along, and if we can acquire more property there, then that's when things start moving. But there won't be any change to what the current situation is now. We just become the owners of the property. And I would say most likely my opinion is, is to let Bracey's lease run out and move them into the uh, annex. Commissioner Wills. Okay, I've got quite a few things to say. Um, Mr. Gordon, I'm confused because you're saying you want to buy the property but to maintain it as a residential property within the city. Well, that allow okay. the gentleman to live in it. I don't, I will tell you is that yes, the mayor had asked earlier, which I couldn't answer, but um, I did go out to our neighborhood because I was really annoyed when I read this in the agenda that our residents in that area, that longtime neighborhood, were not informed of this. Um, I think that's personal. I'm. It's shame on us, in my opinion, that we would be looking at property in your neighborhood to buy to put a HR department in there and not tell you what we were doing. So that disgusted me at that point. And yes, I did go out in the neighborhood on Saturday and I sent emails out. We do have one more email from Mr. Morgan that will go in the record uh, regarding not, his um, concern. Commissioner Wilson. Okay, I'm just Commissioner Wilson. Yes. That will be put into the record when we get through with the discussion. That's fine. I'm just... A note. I have it right here in front of me. Fine. I'm just noticing okay. that it's there. I know. The other aspect, I'm sure that I'm the, question, the concern regarding Senator Bracey being over there, and when the mayor mentioned a comment about someone wasn't interested, I'm assuming that was me, but when you then you weigh out the next level as to um, is it the most cost effective is to not renew the lease in 18 and to move our HR department over there? Yes, it is. I don't think taking a neighborhood, putting an HR or buying property, because it doesn't give you the reassurance, the residents the reassurance that we're not gonna come out and buy more property. That's a concern. I spoke on Saturday to someone that, well, if you're gonna buy that one, why aren't you gonna buy mine? Next you're gonna be coming after me. I've heard issues that, um, there's one thing here that was written in the agenda that was concerning me. It says longer term, the site could serve as an extension of the Lake Front Park, however, any such future use would have to be reviewed and approved by the city commission. 
that does not give you as residents the assurance that we're not going to come looking for your property. I understand your concerns. I look forward when I read that, I think, okay, go to Mr. Grogan's comment. Is it going to be a boat dock down there? And let's park boats on that land. Is that what the long term is? Is a boat dock and having cars pull in, in the, and park there and dispose of whatever they're doing in that parking lot? And then it says here that the house next door is selling for four hundred, is on the market for four hundred and forty-five thousand. Well, when you put a parking lot in, that doesn't actually increase the property of value, does it? It doesn't increase your value of property. And it just, I'm absolutely just, I feel we've disregarded your opinions when this came in without you noticing, being noticed. And it just, I'm, I'm very discouraged. And I'm trying to keep some of my opinions civil. But it totally annoys me that this is on one of the items that I think we should be making use of other facilities we may have, such as if we have to not renew the lease. I'm also looking at what about the substation at Fountains West? Is there other options that we could use that are available to us instead of going into your neighborhoods, into one of our established neighborhoods and creating an issue where we're now bringing trucks in, people in, um, you can't tell me they say it's three or four people, but don't tell me that city trucks aren't going to be coming down there to going into HR. Your neighborhood is not the place to, to, to put our HR department. It is not the place for us to buy. We are now working on the lakefront park, and all we're doing is telling you that possibly it could be commissions down the road that we're going to come after your house. That does not do anything for our longtime established lakefront community. And I do not want to see boat docks down there. I don't, I mean, I don't want to see a, um, sorry, a parking lot. I don't want to see what could happen down there later and that we started this. I want to maintain that neighborhood the way it is as an established, quaint, residential neighborhood of folks who have lived there for a long time. I don't want to see that change. I think we've got enough land and we should be making decisions that are more cost effective. And that may, if that means not renewing Mr. Bracey's lease, then we need to do that. So I want to see item number three taken off the table. All right. Commissioner First. <laughs> Commissioner First. Um, first off, uh, I don't think option one or two is feasible whatsoever. Um, we city would be spending a lot of money and would have absolutely nothing to show for it. Option four, I'd like to see that happen regardless of anything else going on. I think the city needs that space. We've demonstrated a need for it. It's right there where HR is now. It's going to be very cost effective to us. And uh, <clears throat> we can accommodate our HR department right where they're at now. Option number three. I think that would be the best return on investment for the city if we buy that property. And it's not like we're going in and going with eminent domain and taking this property away or anything. It was offered to us. So I think the humanitarian thing to do would be to work with Mr. Augusto and his family. If we have another space for HR to go to, and we still purchase that property, we can do that. There would be no urgency in moving the Augustos out and going in there and renovating it anyway. It would just be that the city owns that property for future use to be de determined later. There's not been any discussion on how that property is going to be used. That house is going to sit there until we decide how best to use that property. So I think we ought to exercise uh, option four and option three and work with the Augustos. I think that would be the most humanitarian thing the city could do right now. He's not asking for anything. He understands the situation. We don't owe him anything, but I think that would be the right thing to do is to work with this family who's a new resident of Oco Coe and show them that we do care about the residents, himself and all of you. We don't plan on going in there and building an amusement park or anything on that property. 
there is no plans for it. The only thing we were going to use it for is to renovate it to accommodate the HR department, which is half dozen people that would be there during normal business hours. Okay, that's it. All right, I'm on. Just if you, well, that's fine. Just come on up to the podium. You have to come to the podium and give your name and address. Go keep a record. I'm Joy Nielsen. He's my husband. And I'm at 109 East McKee Street in Ocoee. When we first heard of the plans to improve Ocoee, at one point there was a plan that came through that showed that plot that you're speaking of buying was a, a big parking lot and then there was a boat ramp across the street. That is what I think is happening here is you I'm afraid somebody is taking advantage of the situation in order to get that property knowing in a year or two it's going to be turned into a huge parking lot with a boat ramp. If you do that, you will really hurt our neighborhood. That's all. I, I, that's, I think that's what, one of the reasons we're so upset. It's because we have seen the plan. Yeah, just a second. I, I think that plan's going by the wayside, so he, he can tell you that that plan's not there. Yeah. Could we get, Al, you just showed us a 90% plan. There's no boat dock there. Boat dock is going to be down the other end where it is, the ramp. Can no, you, there, there was early on oh, during the conceptual planning process uh, yeah. discussions about relocating the boat ramp. If you'll remember the uh, original conceptual plan right. that GAI did, uh, had us buying the mobile home park uh, and putting it over there. Uh, that was later termed too, e too expensive. Uh, the basic interest relative to that is right now with the boat ramps and the parking area in the middle of the park that it's difficult to separate those uses. So when we have a special event that there's an overlap between people trying to get to the water with their boats and us having the streets closed for the special event. And so the, the consultants at that time looked at several different options. Uh, and there was an option to go to the south, just as there was an option to go to the north. But the conceptual plan that was approved by the city commission in February didn't include either of those. There's actually no funding for phase three, uh, which includes addressing the relocation of the boat ramp and building the boardwalk and, and doing those types of things. So there is a conceptual need to provide some level of separation uh, between where boat access occurs and where we have events. Right now they're in the same place. And so if we're like Founders Day, you can't have people come in with their boats in the middle of that because that's where the stage is gonna be put. So the, with that nature, we were trying to find a way to separate those uses. That isn't what this is about at this point. This is uh, an opportunity has presented itself. Uh, property owner is interested in selling to the city. He sees the development and things going on downtown. He wants to try to support that in any way he can. And this was a way that he's proposed to support that. But as far as what to do with the property, that's your decision. Thank you. All right. Mr. Nelson, did you want to come back up? No, sir. No, you no, we can't hear it on the recording. Next city hall must it have wider seats <laughs> <laughs> to, to well, accommodate those of us that are a bit wider than others. Uh, to ask me to believe that the city doesn't have some kind of idea that they could use that property for something, uh, I think is a bit naive. When you look going up McKee and you consider how much of the property already belongs to the city, as you're going up 
at least I think it is, you see houses disappearing and then you see city people mowing it. We only got and, two. Well, I just, I do think it is, what, what kind of guarantee would I have anyway oh. if, 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 they, if someone else is elected and someone else says, I need, okay, we've got, we own this, let's make this something else. Uh, there's no way that that can be guaranteed to me. Again, it's, it's the integrity of our neighborhood and the fact that it is one of the, if not the oldest neighborhood in the city. And if I'm all for progress, I'm all for our city growing, but not at the expense of, of destroying the existing neighborhood that is that you know that I've grown to, to love so much. I guess I'm not really adding anything to what I said before, other than as we're sitting here, you might say there is an, another. We don't have any purpose for it, or, or we don't have anything, and that that's probably true. But what's to make that happen later on when someone else decides? Oh, we already own this, and look at this. We can, and I can't really accept the fact that it is the most financial expedient, financially expedient either. It just doesn't, it just, to me, common sense doesn't seem to make, you know, to, to, that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, also, you know, let the senator move. That's, that's what I say. Let the senator move. Why, why uproot people? I mean, I've been a taxpayer in this city my entire life. I have served this city my entire life. Let him move. How long has he been here? You know, uh, I'm starting to, to ramble now, and I don't want to waste any more of your valuable time. I'm at the risk of sounding like a crackpot, but I don't think, I do think that the wheels of progress are turning, and I think that is a good thing. But I really don't think it should be at the expense of an older neighborhood, which in one of the first places gives that area its charm anyway. Uh, that's about all I have to say unless there's someone has a question or any comment for me that they'd like to respond to. I, I just want to make a comment about Stark, Tim, Mr. Nielsen. We, we don't buy all them houses down on the street. The one is a dilapidated burn up house that we had to buy because we wouldn't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. So we did buy it. The other one is Margaret's house that she sold us at a good profit to put where we put in City Hall. Now we did buy Burstow office because it was sitting there dilapidated and nobody wanted to do anything with it. We want to make sure that they come back in and put a decent building in that, that will go fit into downtown, the Mr. Worsen's old office. And mm -hmm. the other one that I've got some conflict with people up here on is the McGuire house on the corner. Miss McGuire's house that That's I'd like piece to see it stay there. Me too. That I've got other people that don't want to stay there, that want to tear it down or do something else with it. I'd like to see even at least make it a bed and breakfast. It'll be a nice little place on the corner to still have that house. That was the first mayor who's up on the end down there. That was his house. But that's not all consensus up here either. So every time we do this stuff, somebody needs to say it. It all comes to what happens when we try to do things and don't work out. I, we don't buy houses. We bought Miss Dunn's house. She wanted to sell it. We bought it. So it's a it's a it's a parking lot for them. To park. Well, and that right, I believe that that right is of the owner to say that. And Mr. Freeman, in saying that he would like to sell it, is yeah. well within his rights in doing so. I don't I don't say that's. Well, what about what if we did buy it, keep it, and let him live in it? And go ahead and do what I'd, I'd like us to do anyway is, is, is evict, or not evict, but don't renew the lease for Mr. Bracey. And put in the, in the stipulations of the contract that it would be made, sold to somebody for a house or two houses. If, it, if, if there is a stipulation in it that it remains a residence and that it remains part of the, the neighborhood and it's not part of some acquisition to make some other type of park improvement, I would not object to that at all. But the, Mr. Mayor. That's, that's what I'm saying. I, I, it all, like I said, it all came from the problem we got a 
and not having space. Mr. Mayor, if, if you're going to do that option um, and you were going to keep it as um, a, a rental, yes. we would probably just, and I think the city attorney would probably want to weigh in on that too, that we would just have to pick an end date for that um, for maybe a demolition or something or, or selling yeah. the property. I, whatever is done at the end of that, but if it were going to change um, basically the zoning on that property, there would be public hearings on that anyways. We don't want to change so that the would, zoning. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It would have to come back <clears throat> for public hearings. The, 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 all the neighbors would be noticed and there'd be placards yeah. put out. So that and couldn't happen, changing it from residential, if, it, if you're afraid of bringing some type of commercial use in down there. And that's another Everybody point. would have to be notified yeah. and there'd be public you hearings. You can't do it without changing the zoning anyway. But the, the other point is, and I called, I called last the first week and told uh, Hank Henry Morgan, because I know Henry tells everybody. So I called Henry and told him about what was the, the house and what was going, what they were doing with it, to let him know. But and I don't know why the city didn't notify the neighbors within a certain square footage or footage of the house, so that lot one time. But it's just like buying a house anywhere. You go put a contract in on the house, but we're not trying to buy any of those other houses. We want to fix up the streets and everything else. So that's that's what we're trying to do. So we got to come up with a nice, like I said. My concern, sir, is, is I know. What, what's done with it after the mm -hmm. temporary right. uh, human resources is out. Yeah, well, like I said, I, I, I don't know if he could ask for if we could do what I said or not. I don't know, you can put a stipulation on the, uh, on the uh, what do you call it? Put a deed restriction. Uh, deed restriction on it. Put a deed restriction on it where it can't be done. Sure. And I know Rob, Rob, Rob's trying to solve a problem here with what we're doing with moving. We're moving the city hall because, believe it or not, this one's sinking gradually, but slowly, but it's going. But so we, we want it where it's all the citizens, but we don't want people to think we're trying to. I, I don't sit up here. I've been living here most my, all my life. You know, I don't want to do something that's going to make the neighbors mad, but we also want to do something that makes the city too go. But like I said, the houses part, we don't try to buy them unless they come ask us. Roger wanted to sell it, so. You know. Well, I, I I figured that much. Yeah. So, and I, I'm, I'm not I know that I had I had I I wanted to put. This, that's not where I wanted to put uh, HR and start with. I want to put them over here. It's in our building. I'd still like to see that. And if we get if we buy it, hold it, put a deed restriction on it, we can go back and sell it someday. Because we're going to try to sell the other building down on, on McKee Street to somebody that'll put in a nice little office. It'll look like the brick, the old bricks downtown, and you know, maybe a little uh, shop. So, so all right. May I ask a question, Mayor? Yeah. So, what you're proposing, let's just, we can bring it back to clarifying this, okay? That proposing item four, which would be to not renew Senator Bracey's lease, yeah. and moving HR into that section of the City Hall. Purchasing 125 East McKee Street, keeping it as a residential home, at which time it would have a deed restriction, which comes back in the terms, that it will not change from a residential home. The question I have is, when we, if we purchase that home with those, that situation, what are we gaining at this point? Because someone mentioned the condition of the home, no offense. Okay, I mean, someone mentioned your air conditioner on the roof. I'm just saying that, that are we buying a situation that we have to go ahead and put money in to improve, which will not be a cost-effective measure for us when we're just trying to move HR? That's what, the, again, this is my, I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm questioning uh, because right. I'm just re going through what everyone has kind of set up here and threw that in, but if the house is in the condition that's in. Well, how they living in it? It's, well, it sounds mean, like it's falling apart. No, <laughs> no, no, but they made a comment sounds about the roof like and the air conditioner. Down. I don't know what they are. I'm you, just. You come up a minute and I'll, I'll let Yeah, Mr. I'd love Nielsen. to know what your. Well, let yeah. Mr. Nielsen, he had his I'm hand sorry. up. The prior tenants at 125 East McKee was my son. He was there for three, four years renting from Roger. In that time, there, there are some problems in that. There's going to need, if you're going to occupy that without a, a for considerable expense, uh, it's going to be a considerable expense with many things. The air conditioning is, is not functioning properly. The, uh, I don't know about the roof. Everything has been kind of 
patched up as it goes because Roger has not put a great deal of, of money into it, and understandably so. On top of that, too, I'm, I'm assuming that that, it, that, a, that the, the deed in, or the uh, property also includes the vacant lot between my house and that. Having mowed that for three years, I can tell you that with the heavy rain that we've had, that is, it is saturated. It is saturated terribly, and, and you can mow it on the highest, you know, setting, and, and your mower will still sink into it. Okay. All right. We've got to wrap up. May I'm going to make one, one more. Let me in. All right. You make your comment, and then i got to wrap it up. I can confirm uh, a lot of that. Essentially, I had to hire somebody to mow the lawn because uh, all the water literally goes to the side of the house where the, the driveway is at, uh, to the point that we had tadpoles literally growing around our house. Uh, so I can, uh, I can definitely confirm that. The other part about the AC, it's just that the house is very porous. So I th uh, Roger installed something new for the AC, which helps us. The problem, the reason, the problem that we're having it's so porous is that my electricity bill is, is up to $400 a month now because of that. So I'm, I'm literally, my, my goal this month was literally to seal as much of the house as possible on the windows and all that because it's all pretty old and very porous. Uh, just one comment that I did want to make, um, I prefer that we not go with option three, but if, if it is, if option three does become a part of it and uh, the city is willing to lease it to me, the only thing I propose or I at least ask for um, is that at least that, that if that is the option that you're going to go with that to allow me the, the same, at least for a year minimum, uh, the same rental amount that I'm doing right now. Uh, that will help my family. It will allow us to financially continue and for me to pay for the uh, massive amount of procedures that I, uh, my wife has to undergo. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, can I make a comment? Huh? Oh boy. Can I make a comment? Yeah, go ahead, Commissioner. Um, I think I think we're trying to bite off a little too much than we can chew here. I think we have an agreement pretty much on where we want to vote on 14, and we go ahead and take the vote on 14, and then the deal with the purchasing the property or something, bring that back. Next commission meeting with more information on it, more ideas, more what we're gonna do, more to satisfy the citizens, and not try to do both of these things at one time. Well, well, um, I mean, I think that would just solve everything right now, wouldn't it? Does that include uh, Representative Brown too? Well, that's, I was gonna ask that question. So far, Representative Brown, we designed the clinic to go around her office space because when we were doing that back in May and June, we were not looking to relocate the elected and officials. But we that would be a question. If you're going to not renew the lease for Bracey, do you also want yeah, to say? Yeah, because gonna, what are you going to do with the, where are you going to get the space? Commissioner's office? Yes. Once again, <laughs> one room. You've been, moved, you've been moved four times. That's uh, going to be that's the. That's why I say. Yeah, that was they, going to be the way to they're, go. They're, they can go rent. They get a stipend from the state. Right. They can go find a place to lease. You know. Yeah. All right. So I guess that would be the question if you're not going to renew the lease for you both of the elected that, officials. Both of them, yeah. well, the Al, is the uh, lease, what's the lease date for the representative? November 30th. They're it's both the same on the both. same? So, so they're both the same time. All right. Let's. let's I, I, so you want you want me to make a motion? Hold on a minute. We're not done. You want me to make a motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion on item 14 to end the lease for Bracey and Representative Brown and have our HR stay there for picking number four. I will second that. All right. That's what I, I like to hear. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Brody to um, close the lease on Commissioner Senator Bracey and Brown and Senator Bracey. Seconded by Commissioner Wilson. Any more comments? No. More comments? Let's vote on that. Motion carries unanimously. Yeah. Commissioner Oliver absent. All right. Mr. Cox, you want to make a comment now? <laughs> Mr. Cox. Mr. Cox. He's good. <laughs> no. We just voted on that. 
Mr. Larry, we vote. We However, where you're going. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. If, if I could, Mayor, clarify one thing about the other property for person. What other property? The, the, tr the original transfer date would be. Oh. In well, hold on. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. We haven't done that yet. Well, that's we all. We haven't done that yet. Larry, we haven't done it yet. <laughs> he has a little problem. Well, I got here and we got here and yeah, here. yeah, we have some. They don't help. No. Does he help? <laughs> the, right. the, the sales contract proposes that we uh, actually close on the property in February of 2019, and it it included some early buyout provisions where there were funds going to both the lease E uh, and the owner in order for us to be able to enter the property uh, earlier in order to affect the remodeling and be able to put HR in there. So for tax purposes, uh, Mr. Freeman is not wanting to close on the property until February of next year. So that's a, uh, so what's the difference? Just to, just to give you that information relative. That's to fine. I mean, it's so not like we're, not we're putting, in a hurry to buy it. If we're not putting right. HR there, then there's a... Right, right. So right. that's why I put it out. I'm that's a, why I want I'm to make sure you knew that. That's okay. And Rob, I, I know, and I, I apologize. What time? City managers time? tried work doing stuff for what we're supposed to do. But I would say, let's just, I don't need to care about going to the next meeting. And I, I, all I want to do is make it where we have the things to do what we're supposed to do with what the neighborhoods are. We, we're talking about redoing that whole neighborhood with the streets, you know, and I, I, I brought up about sending the letters out to you about doing the brick street or changing somebody, you know, we're making a choice where you wanted asphalt or bricks. I don't see why you'd change that neighborhood from the bricks. The problem we've got is those curbs. It's got to get rid of those curbs down there or something I know. But what I would say is, and I, 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 I wait a minute, I'd like to see I'd like to see us take and do what we, that's what I wanted to see done tonight is what we did. Right. I think it was time to change that because there's no sense in sending our staff out of the municipal complex to somewhere we have to buy or do, which I would buy the property, but I wouldn't want to put a commercial building on it ever. But what I'm going to do is hand that over to you and I'm going to make the motion that we don't buy the house. I will second that. And Mayor, if I could just, I, I, I would agree with you on that. If we found, you know, my concern was finding somewhere to put human resources. And, um, you know, we had talked we about moving, to, moving uh, the Senator and the representative before, and I, I don't think we really wanted to do that at that point. But now that we have somewhere, um, I'm not sure why we would want to look at the house at this point. There you go. Because and that, I, 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 I'm telling you, I, I appreciate, he, he went out of his way trying to figure out how we were going to solve this problem without taking and doing it. It is him. It's all of us. We, we work to try to solve that problem. And I will tell you that the property we used to own years and years ago, Tim, and I don't know about the rest of you, Ms. Dunn probably knows, we used to own that island over there where that building's sitting, where the recording studio's at. So there's an opportunity maybe to buy that back. I think we need to put our eyes on buying that property back, keeping it in the city, making a park back there like it used to be. There used to be a big gazebo uh, dock out there on the end of it. I know Donna might remember. I don't know if y'all do, but I'd like to see us work at getting that back someday. So that's another issue. But uh, not motion. motion made. I have a motion on the floor from the mayor not to buy 125 East McKee Street, seconded by Commissioner Wilson. Any more comments? Let's vote. And I can go home and talk to my wife because she might not have talked to me. <laughs> Mayor, can I make a comment at this point? Yes, ma'am. I, I, th I want to thank the residents for coming out. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I would hope that in the future that we would notify we, when things like that happen, that we need to notify our residents. I mean, I was out there. It was hot. But I didn't get to everyone. And I did the best I could. And I'm glad that you did come out. But I want to see us inform you as residents what's going on. I don't. I normally will tell you that I wouldn't have read this agenda until Sunday night. That's my normal Sunday night reading. And I would never have gotten out to see who meant the, many, the group I saw to inform me what's going on. So I want residents to be informed. That's part of our job as your commissioners in our city to keep you informed of what's going on in your community. What, what, while you're sitting here and you're kind of captive for a few minutes, what's your thoughts on the 2 East McGuire? 
with the old McGuire house. Would you rather sit tore it down in some commercial building built there? No, no. All right. There you go, Rosemary. Do that, but the thing is, uh, well, I wasn't, I was not, oh, no, no, it, it wasn't me. We listened to someone speak about that property. We, we want to make it a, and a lady it, wants to make it a bed and breakfast. But I, okay, there's but I again, there again is a problem with, uh, with uh, that building being in bad shape, too. It is in bad shape. So if that's her, she's, and, and in that issue, that she's going to do that. She'd have to do everything herself, and then we'd do a lease on it, and then later on down the time, she could buy the building. So that's another time down the road. Mayor, do you want to make the announcement? I know that we've both been included in the letters. Um, I haven't responded, but um, about the miscommunication within the West Orange County. So oh, yeah, I, have, I was going to do that at the end. Okay, I didn't know if you wanted to do it while they were here so that people know. I was going to do that at the end, but I'll go ahead and do it yeah. now. We had we had a <laughs> reporter that reported in a couple meetings back that we were going to make the Withers McGuire House a bed and breakfast. We never said Withers McGuire House. There's two McGuire Houses in Oak Boy. There's the McGuire House and then there's the Withers McGuire House, which was never mentioned, but the reporter put it that way. And boy, did I get a lot of emails and a lot of Facebook comments and all that. But believe me, that was never the intention. We, the two East McGuire is the one we're talking about. And if the lady can do that, she's a doctor principal too, Tim. She's an ex-principal and all that stuff. But she's looking to do a bed and breakfast if we can. The city's told her to go in. She's done a study of all the problems inside. So it'd be up to her to decide if she wants to come to us and buy it. So I will tell you, though, that we're working on the streets. Commissioner Wilson knows that. We're trying to figure out. Maybe you'll get a... Uh, handout or something telling you about trying to whether you want to do right and I, I will tell you something else the city manager is he brought up to me a while about a month ago about doing the downtown streets in your area by redoing them and putting in nice brick again and pavers or whatever and trying to fix them up and that was his suggestion so, so you can always come to the budget hearing on Wednesday night because that's when the <laughs> and, money's approved. And I, I will tell you about the budget. That's another thing we were on the news about. Somebody went out and told everybody we were putting it up to 6.5 and we were going to raise the taxes. No, we're not. The taxes are going to be, as we keep them right now, the next meeting is 5.5, which will go down from 5.65 to 5.5. So we're lowering the taxes again, or they have to lower them. So that's, we're working at that. So. We're trying to keep it going the other way. We've got a lot of businesses coming in on the outside of town on the 429, out on the roads and stuff that are coming in to Oak Boy now to help subsidize the tax on the citizens. All right, we have, that's all on that issue then. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, ma'am. You won't hurt you. Well, feel free to come right up. <laughs> You gotta fill a form out. Go up to the to the microphone. We have lived in <clears throat> in the same place in Ocoa for thirty two years. These people that are my neighbors that came, how long have you lived in your house? house? Yeah. Okay. And you've been in that neighborhood? And your mother and daddy lived in that house for longer than that because they were living there when I moved in. But, I mean, this is an old established neighborhood, a historic neighborhood. There's not many places like this left in the city of Ocoee, and it should be treasured, and it should be left like it is. You it just didn't... Um, she I don't that. want I don't want <laughs> asphalt on the roads. I want the she wants the brick. holes in the brick that has gone down into the earth and made potholes. That could be fixed, but it still needs to stay brick. Yeah. I mean, you're putting in a town. You're changing everything up in the town and around in the park, and that's enough changes for right now. I mean, us old folks can't take too many changes. <laughs> And that's and I I just want to thank Commissioner Wilson again for just being such a big help and caring so much and going from house to house to talk to different people. And thank you. That's thank you.
You, you're All a right. good commissioner. <laughs> and if you provide me with your email list, I would your email address, I would kick you on my list. Yeah. If you're not All on right. there. <laughs> Authorize number 15, item number 15. Sure. Authorize the city manager to form this proposed use of the city property for future location of the St. John's River Water Management District local office. Craig Shatterick, assistant city manager. I'd like to request formally that um, you authorize city manager Robert Frank to do just what the mayor read, um, send a formal proposal to the St. John's Water Management District proposing use of our property at the corner of Kissimmee and McKee Street in our downtown, away from the neighborhoods, <laughs> for um, consideration of a future office of the St. John's River Water Management District. They have not picked us. They have not decided to move in any direction yet. This is a preemptive strike on our part um, in the interest of economic development. And per the agenda memo, I'd like for you to also authorize him to extend in the proposal that we offer up use of the Lakeshore Center for free for hosting meetings and symposia and that we have some discussion with them about um, at their cost using our fleet services and um, entering into an agreement uh, that would be brought back before the commission. And that's what my request is. I'm happy to answer any questions, but it's, um, I'm requesting uh, that you allow us to do that. All right, we have a question, Commissioner Williams. I have one question, okay. and this was a question that was brought up by a resident. Okay. Okay. They were concerned, um, well, there was two things. I, I gather from my understanding that it was going to be, is it a potential three-story building or two-story building, or we don't know at this point? We don't know at this point, um, other than if they did decide to put an office in Ocoee, um, they would try to take the lowest cost option, which would probably be one story. But, um, and city planner rumors lurking around here somewhere and, and our deputy directors here, I think the, the, the land development code allows up to three stories in that area. So, um, I'm, I'm for economic development, right. trust me. I, I'm not a negative on this one. Sure. I'm just coming up with the questions that I was asked while I was talking yes. to my residents. So, and the concern they had, well, there was one. And the other one, the parking was very interesting that we would have access to a parking lot. Right. That was of interest. But the other aspect they were concerned with was the use of the Lakeshore Center because residents aren't given that privilege. That how much would you be give, how much use would you be giving them of the Lakeshore Center? Um, when residents don't have that same privilege. So yeah, that was a question. I, I think, <clears throat> Commissioner, I think that's something that um, we want to develop before we um, bring a, an agreement back to you. And we're not talking about the popular days. Um, we're probably talking for symposia and those types of things, typically when it's not used, Monday, to, to Monday through Friday, okay. um, daytime hours. Um, it's in there to spice up the deal a bit. Um, you know, we can come up with something we think is fair and something they'll be interested in, but uh, we just wanted to come up with something that, that's just an additional option that perhaps a Popkin in Orlando wouldn't be able to offer them. They weren't negative. Again, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not negative on this. I'm just repeating the questions that were asked of me, and sure. I think we should answer them, especially as our residents are listening. Since we've had discussion, I do feel compelled to tell you that this is a major economic development mm -hmm. um, boost for a small developing downtown. Mm -hmm. It would bring in lots of people during the week who are gonna to wanna to eat at restaurants and keep their doors open. Um, it's also the, the symposia that they host a couple times a year. They bring the other water management districts in. Would love to have them here because all our businesses, our hotel would be full. We would, we've been working, we meaning Ginger, myself, Mike Rumor, Angel, El Portilla trying to uh, bring hotels to the city because we, we have needs. So um, going back years to when we hired Angelou Economics, um, what drives the redevelopment, what allows you to eventually continue to lower taxes is that non-residential base. And to do that, it's employment. And that's, that's why we're saying this is a win-win. You need 
a motion or just, yeah? I'll make the motion to continue this, the talks and then bring back the information to us. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Grogan, seconded by Commissioner Wilson. Could we um, maybe, I'm, on, I, I'm just thinking, Mayor, we, if, if we want to give them some type of letter saying that the, the commission has um, considered this, mm -hmm. and, and I was just wondering if perhaps the motion could be amended to include something that we would consider offering them that piece of property cost free. I, I think it's important to have no, that in whatever we send them uh -huh. instead of just considering it. Any, anything else that you wanted added into that? Well, we, we had talked about the I Lakeshore mean, Center, and I think, you know, as long as we come up with something that's fair, I, I, I mean, something it, like that, letting yeah. them use the Lakeshore Center is going to bring in a lot more economic development, too, as far as right. hotels and restaurants and things like that. If we were going to talk about sharing fleet services, wow. since their fleet department's 50 miles away, um, we would do that at cost, so that's something we could easily handle. But uh, I, I think the important thing to say is that the City Commission has considered this and has agreed for to move forward favorably with that offer. There's there's a section and in And we still bring it back. It still have to be executed officially, right. but at least we could include the minutes and send them the minutes showing that you all had discussed this. There's right, and you and you here. you do have it written in here, so it's in the agenda minute. But but yeah, if you want to write it down on a letter. Well, there's here's the, is this it right here the last four lines? The city yep. commission directs the city manager to submit a proposed letter to St. John's Water Management officially offering the city owned property located at the Free corner of charge. Do you want to finish your, it was your motion, I'm sorry. No, no, you're right. I mean, when I made the motion on this, what's written in here, it's already, it's already written motion in Motion per staff recommendation. Motion per staff recommendation. Motion per staff recommendation. You have the same second go? I will second, continue Second that. by Commissioner Wilson. Is that good enough? Yeah. No, I All think right. that's fine. I, th I just thought yeah. it was important. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, they know, uh, yeah, you know you're looking at it and problem. continuing to, to come up with something for them, but I think the important right. thing is the, the property. No more questions? No. More discussion? Press vote. Motion carries unanimously. Who's here? Commissioner Oliver absent. All right. Staff action. Uh, nothing further. So I'm asking commissioners. Commissioner first. None. Commissioner Wilson. Just want to say thank you to Public Works. Um, we're so happy. Uh, my residents are very happy that we've they've seen the repaving on between G on Geneva from McGuire to Blueford, to where you actually can now see lines yeah. as you're driving. Yeah. And those who travel at six o'clock in the morning, they yeah. haven't told me yet, but they're very happy, I'm sure. And we're right now the um, remilling of Orlando Avenue. It's looking real good. I'm some of the neighbors aren't real thrilled three in the morning, but um, they know that it's going to happen and it looks good and um, the only thing we're going to ask the police department is to watch speeding down there because now the road looks good. Folks do get out of control and I know we have some more streets that are coming along right behind this one and my Malcolm and if Steve doesn't mind that's coming up behind this one. Yes, as they finish um, Orlando, they already did story as you can see they're going to finish um jump over to malcolm they also have tiger minor park to pave and then they'll do toman and what you just approved tonight was the reconstruction of marshall farms road so that'll also, be down there tell them why you're going to do all of them oh there's a section on geneva between blueford and mcguire that wasn't done because there's a drainage issue there and we didn't want to put a patch over something that was going to fail we're going to be going back in there to reconstruct that at another time okay. Well, thank you for the lines. No problem. I, I will say, uh, Commissioner Grogan, I'm, I'm good, thank you. Some, some, they're fixing Blueford and that Main Street. They're fixing those pavements to us. It's water main. Is that us or is that that? That's um, the city contracted, utilities contracted with um, a con contractor to go ahead and repair that. They've done the base work. They hope to have asphalt down either Thursday or Friday, and we can have that fully opened up again. All right. Anybody else have any comments? Well, it's a little longer than we usually are, but it was good, good comments. And so um, I think the signs on Lakewood, we need to make sure they stay up, saying one way up. Those paper signs are getting wet and down put signs up that says one way on the street it'll show people because they're turning in on it against other traffic so you know 
keep that where they won't do that. And uh, check on the trimming of the palm trees so we can get that done. All right, everybody have a good evening.